Oh, hello there. I'm Bilchen Akupir. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 7 of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Ass. Ah. Oh. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Washington Irving. Chapter 7. Another of his sources of fearful pleasure was to pass long winter evenings with the old Dutch wives as they sat spinning by the fire with a row of apples roasting and spluttering along the hearth and listened to their marvellous tales of ghosts and goblins and haunted fields and haunted bricks and haunted bridges and haunted houses and particularly of the headless horseman, galloping Hessian of the Hollow, as they sometimes called him. He would delight them equally by his anecdotes of witchcraft, and of the powerful omens and portent to sights and sounds in there, which prevailed in the earlier times of Connecticut, and would frighten them woefully with speculations upon comets and shooting stars, and with the alarming fact that the world did absolutely Around, and that they were half the time topsy derby. But if there was a pleasure in all this, whilst the bleak cuddling in the chimney corner of a chamber that was all of our or de glow from the crackling wood fire, and well, of course, no spectre dared to show its face. It was duly purchased by the terrors of a subsequent walk on wards. What fearful shapes and shadows beset his path amidst the dim and ghastly glare of a snowy night, with what was full of ditty ivory trembling ray of light streaming across the waste fields from some distant window. How often was he appalled by sunshine covered with snow, which a like a shitted spectre beset his very path? How often did he shrink with curdling awe at the and of his own steps, on the frosty crust beneath his feet, and dread to look over his shoulder, lest he should behold some uncouth being tramping close behind him, and how often was he thrown into complete dismay by some rushing blasts, howling among the trees, in the idea that it was the galloping Hessian on one of his nightly scurrings. All these, however, were mere tours of the night, phantoms of the mind that walk in darkness. And though he had seen many spectres in his time, and been more than once beset by Satan in diverse shapes, in his lonely perambulations, yet daylight put an end to all these evils, and he would have passed a pleasant life of it, in despite of the devil and all his works. If his path had not been crossed by a being that causes more perplexity to mortal men than ghosts, goblins, and the whole race of witches put together, and that wish a woman to be continued. <laughs>